Okay everyone, so I have been busy for the past couple of days. I did answer some YouTube comments but not make any YouTube videos. So the main reason why uh, is because I was tidying up my tea room. There was so much clutter everywhere so I wanted to organize it. So I'll give you guys a little walk around, show you how you like it. Um, my mom appreciates all the comments that she wrote on the video regarding her cakes. She loves it and she is actually taking some baking classes so mad props to her. So, uh, today will be three videos. So this one that you're watching now is just going to be a little update on some of the tarantulas that have molted. Um, I called out Scarlet, my bee smithy, she molted. Uh, to Master Guns 1, he was wondering why my camera dry wouldn't eat and wasn't featured on my feeding video. Well, I kind of predicted that both of them were in pre molt and sure enough, both of them have, so you'll see that. Uh, my NNC molted, mature male, and this one here, I recorded this before, I didn't like the way the initial video turned out, so this is just a like new introduction, the rest I took it a couple of days ago, uh, is my Cochiana Bruneeps, uh, which you won't be able to see it, I will be updating her because I do have to rehouse this one into a deli cup, uh, she's fully adult 2 inches, so uh, you'll get to see that. The second video will be a, a Mythbuster video 52, I promised you on that. It will be strictly on the Hapactera pulcropes, but it will also apply to other Hapactera species like the Marque and the Curvator. And the third video uh, I'll be posting, it will be um, not an official feeding video, but like a supplement feeding video, like 129 part 3. Uh, those will be featuring uh, the ones that I have suspected that was in pre molt but have molted, like the Lassidora difficile sling, that mysterious pokey, which I believe to be a either or Formosa, Miranda, or Tigrino Aselli. It still needs to grow up, and these ones are here. Ten more. So you'll uh, really like them. All right, so show you the tea room, then we'll get on with the molt. So I do have to hang this poster. Uh, this is the poster I got back in the 1990s, 1996. is when I first started collecting teas. It's about 20 years now. As you can see, uh, I stored my Koopaling plushies and I'll putting my PS4 and PS3 down here. I actually added a Legend of Zelda poster since I grew up with Nintendo and I love the Zelda franchise. So these are all the 8-bit characters and enemies and items. So I think the only thing that's missing is the other statue that's in the dungeons. I have this box here which is where I keep all my Timothy Hay for the guinea pigs. See, much more organized and my pokey poster with all of the pokies currently in the hobby. Okay, so before I show the molts, um, unfortunately with molts come with uh, several, well, few losses. Uh, Terror the Terrible, uh, which was my trapdoor, the black and silver trapdoor. Yeah, she unfortunately passed away uh, yesterday. Uh, that's to be expected. She was a wild caught adult when I bought her back in 2010, so she lived her time, which is uh, to be expected, and I was happy to at least feature her in a couple of feeding videos. Uh, the second one was uh, an unfortunate passing of my Lassie Doridi Striatus, my Goliath Stripe Leg. Um, he died while in the molt, so that sucks. And I think the toughest loss was uh, Naya, my Russian dwarf hamster. Uh, I mean, this one I bought, I got it as a gift around two year, over two years ago from my friend. It was a Russian winter white dwarf hamster and 
Hamsters don't really live that long. They live about on excess uh, two, two and a half years. So she lived her time. I had a great time with her. Will I get another one? I don't know. Probably not because um, the biting of the cage really bothered me <laughs> at night. But yeah, I'll miss her. Rest in peace. Uh, she's buried in my backyard and hopefully uh, she lived a good life with me. All right, everyone. So let's look at the molts. Okay, so let's go show you what they look like. Now, here is Scarlet. My Brachypalma smithy, the Mexican red knee. You can see how gorgeous she is. You can see her red knees. And it'll be pretty cool to get a better video of this one. This is my Brachypalma anitha, the Mexican giant orange knee. 100% in pre molt You can see the bald spot whenever it's black and blue. That means that's your T's in pre molt And I can't wait to see the orange that will come out of their knees versus the much more red on the B Smithy. Okay. Here's my Ramesh Warm Ornamental. Pocotheria Hanama Villa Samika. You can see the folio stripe on this one, the white outline that's surrounding the pokey pattern on the abdomen, it's much more visible, which is a good sign to see whether or not your pokey is a female or not. That's Pokey's dorsally sexing is the possibly the easiest one and the only one that you can do uh, when it's juvenile. But how I sexed her, it wasn't unfortunately by molt, uh, because the molt was you know, kind of really crappy and really not intact like most pokies are, but I did see the ventral on the Hanuma Samika and it is a confirmed female. So I saw the epigastric furrow and literally my eyes lit up in joy because I always wanted a female. And I know that my other one is definitely a confirmed male. So. I do want to get some uh, breeding projects uh, with these guys. Okay, uh, next up is the pair of Trinidad Chevrons, Salon Poas Cambridge Eye. Uh, this is the one I got from tanglesandwebs.com. I mean, really great uh, person to deal with, Don. Uh, here's one of them. I do have to rehouse it into a tall deli cup. This is not for arboreals. You see the molts over here and the real specimen. So I would say this is about two inches or so. And this is the larger one. This is a juvenile. It's very possible that this could be a female. Um, I remember showing Trinity way back when, when she was alive. Of how green she was. Oh yeah, I can see the green on this one. It is really, really cool. Okay, let me just get the molt out of there. There we go. Possibly a very, very green spider, and I like to call this the green with envy. Definitely the largest of the Samopoas. And that is why I could not feed them in feeding video 129. So definitely these guys will be featured in 130. Alas, you can probably make out the little tibial hooks on his legs. Yes, this is my Neoholotheli Incy that I picked up back in August. And this guy is a mature male. Turn out all of he's about two inches. It's pretty sizable for a holotheli or neo holotheli species. Yeah, so he's going away to TC at the end of the month uh, when I'm going to be going to get the uh, T blondie. So 
I'll probably feature him in one last uh, feeding video and then hopefully uh, he'll do his job with a female and get me some nice babies. Alright everyone, so hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the Miss Bether video on the Harpactera Polkrapes. And yes guys, it is official. I will be getting a T-Blondie at the end of the month. Sweet.